Lesson 1. Discover your skills. In fact, I was some, once as young and uh, I thought I'd show you what, I, what happened at school because that's the start of it. Really, I didn't want to be a scientist. What I really wanted to be was Superman. <laughs> and uh, as all scientists know, you need evidence and here is the evidence for, for, for this. Uh, so I do other things like play tennis and uh, gymnastics and I acted in a play, Henry V, at school, and I thought I'd show you these two guys. I'm the handsome guy on the right here, just in case you didn't know. And I tell young people like you, you know, don't become an actor because the guy in front, he, he actually be a scientist, not an actor, because he's now 5,000 years old. And I'm a lot younger than he is, all right. So. Perhaps more important than science for me is art and graphics, and I did a lot of drawing. Uh, and at university, did posters and things of this nature, designed the cover of the university magazine. I think it's very important to actually open up those facets of your creative ability. And in fact, my first award was not for science, it was for this design, and it got into a national newspaper. And uh, I now do logos, and uh, this is my favorite for the Australians here. Um, yeah. This is my latest bumper sticker, which I think very importantly. And oh, I, I redesigned the Japanese flag. For, uh, so hopefully that's good. The other thing, if you, in the 60s you had to play a guitar or you wouldn't get to party, so I had to do that as well. The other thing that was important for me was architecture. The architecture that was most important really was this, Buckminster Fuller's Dome, which was at Expo, which we visited, and it was rather crucial in deciding what the structure of C60 was. So there it is. You'd never know where, when your other ideas might be important. And I think that's an, an issue, I think, today. Lesson two, proclaim your theory. Um die seltsamen Teilchen in ihren etwas merkwürdigen Eigenschaften zu verstehen, hat der Wenzel einmal einen Begriff eingeführt, den nannte er das Spurion. Dieses Spurion war ein etwas komisches Elementarteilchen. Es war nämlich gar kein Teilchen, das heißt, es hatte weder Energie noch Impuls noch einen Ort, sondern es hatte nur noch einen Isospin und eine Parität. Ich kann als anschaulichen Vergleich etwa nur finden, die Katze, die in dem Märchen von Alice in Wonderland vorkommt. Da ist von einer Katze die Rede, die durch einen Spiegel verschwindet und dann verschwindet zuerst der Schwanz und dann der Körper und dann der Kopf der Katze und das bleibt nur das hämische Grinsen der Katze im Raum stehen. Nun, dieses Grinsen der Katze ist sozusagen der Isospin der Spurion. Lesson 3. Defend your theory. Das sind jetzt Theorien, aber es ist eine gute Theorie, wirklich eine gute Theorie. Ich meine, Theorie braucht gar nicht wahr sein. Man, man, man hat nur, nur Bedingungen, bitte sprechen, was Sie wollen, aber immer ein bisschen lächeln dazu, nicht wahr? Also man, ich, ich, ich sage diese Theorie mit ein bisschen lächeln. Und, ähm, äh Lesson 4. Use your knowledge to survive. So preparing fires to cook the food in the Arctic is often a challenge. So of course, when you're hungry, when you're cold, and you're tired, nothing is as good as a, as a hot meal. And here's our guide, Alex, who's perfected the art of baking bread. I mean, this guy deserves a Nobel Prize in baking to prepare something like this in the Arctic. But basically, he had a hot fire with rocks in the bottom of a little platform. He could, he could bake bread, which we just relished. And there were other, other delicious food prepared for us. This is Chris, who, who developed something that I think Starbucks ought to, ought to consider. This is called cowboy coffee. You boil up a pot full of, of grounds, and then you centrifuge it with this round-the-clock motion, pouring out a brown substance which will put, put energy in your system you've never seen before. In his will, Alfred Nobel asked the prizes to be awarded to individuals whose invention or discoveries was of the greatest benefit to mankind. And I think this latter, this latter statement is very important to keep in mind. The research we do in our laboratories is novel, it's exciting, 
But in the end, we should keep in mind how this can be applied to protect mankind and also the, the wilderness. So that, that's my presentation, and I think now it's time for lunch. Thank you so much.